morning, children. Morning, morning yourself. yourself. How's that skin knee, Janie? Fine, thank you. Bye. Bye. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, Mrs. Hall. Good morning, Carl. Did you get around to cleaning out those bins? Miss Hall, a man's only got one pair of hands. Of course, Carl. And when we require more, I'll hire an octopus. Oh, Dr. Corby called about the Norwood book, and I haven't been able to find it. Oh, look under Architecture Modern 724.9, I believe. Robert. Hello, Alicia. How nice to see you. And so early in the morning. You've not been in much lately. Well, to tell the truth, I don't get much time for reading these days. They're keeping you pretty busy down at City Hall, aren't they? I was certainly pleased to see that you were elected to the council, Robert. Why, thanks. Particularly since I count on you to get me my children's wing. Oh. Things are pretty slow at this hour, but drop around in the afternoon when the children are here. The plans are moldering in my desk. Uh, don't worry. You'll get it built, uh, just as you got the library built. Yes, that was over 25 years ago. I just hope Here's you don't have I to want. wait another 25 years. And do you realize that it's been almost 35 years since you first started picking lint off my suit? <laughs> Goodness. Have you worn it that long? I'll check this out for you. Thank you. I must say, you run a very nice little establishment here. Then don't be such a stranger. I'll try not to be. Good. I expect you to become a steady customer. All right. I'll aim for that. Not exactly light summer reading. We've had some um, comments about it. Now, Robert, you tend to your counseling and let me tend to mine. All right, Alicia. There you are. I hope you enjoy it more than I did. Goodbye. Goodness, Tom, that's quite a selection you have there. Yes, ma'am. When do you intend to read them? Tonight. Mrs. Hall, he knows he can't take all these on a junior card. Here's my mother's, my father's, and my sister's. May I have it now? Yes, Tom. see him flying around here in Kenport. Don't you think you've had enough of monsters for a while? There are so many other things to read about. My Freddy, the secrets of the world are on these shelves. And they're all yours to discover. Now, let me see. Here we are. Stories from the Bible. But I've got to read this one again, Mrs. Hall. I went too fast. I've got to read it lots of times. Well, certainly you do. But isn't it wise to leave something for tomorrow? So long until tomorrow. Yes, it is. I envy you, Freddy. I'll tell you what. This is a valuable addition. But if you'll be very careful, you may take it home. Thanks. I promise. Here comes the pride and joy now. Try not to tease him tonight, George. Okay. Let's 
let's put away the chopsticks and get out the forks, because I'm starving. It's not chopsticks, it's Chopin. Chopin or chopsticks, I still like a hot trumpet. Freddie, hi. Hello, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, hey. Fred. What you got there? It's a wonder book by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Wow. Okay, put it away and hurry up. Come on, we've been holding something for you. Oh, did you get the timetable? Oh, yeah. Picked it up. See, they're still running trains to St. Louis. Aha. Uh -huh. You, uh, still set on going? Well, I think I should. I haven't seen Mother in about a year. Is that supposed to be bad? Look what I married. A man who makes jokes about his mother-in-law. Well, it's only going to be for a couple of weeks. Do you think you two can make out all right? As long as there's beer in the icebox. And books in the library. What is this, a new routine meeting at the table? Put it away, will you, Freddy? Thou hast won the victory, said he, running joyously to the knee of Bellaropin. What was that, Bellarohu? Now, there's the limit, Laura. No wonder he's not eating anything. There's no room. He stuffs himself with words. Freddy. Look at him. Come on, give it up now, Freddy. Come on now, eat your supper. Come on now, there's a time for that kind of thing. Come on, Dad, I'll wait. give it back no. to you just as soon as Please, you finish. Dad. George, leave him alone. You can have it. <laughs> Did you see the look he gave me? He's right, you know. You can always get another father. But a good book is hard to find. Why can't he be like other kids? Why does he have to spend all his free time here? Why is his nose always in a book? Look, a man comes home from work, he wants a son. I bought him a catcher's mitt, must be a year ago. Thought we'd toss the ball around and back. Well, it's upstairs in his desk just as new as the day he got it. Well, I played shortstop three years on my high school team. Do you ever try to reach him on his own level? When was the last time you took him for a walk? Just the two of you. Bought him a soda. You know something? I don't even know if he likes sodas. Mr. Slater, stop wishing Freddy was somebody else. Your boy is not just an average boy. He is different. Value that difference. We put far too much stress on conformity in this country. The ballpark isn't the only place a person can be a hero. Some people lead very exciting lives locked in a laboratory or even a library well anyway i'd be glad to pay for the book no that won't be necessary i'd i'd like to replace it myself excuse me a minute yes hello alicia this is robert the uh, council's having its monthly luncheon today at morrissey's how would you like to join us? It wouldn't be about... Excuse me, Robert. I'm sorry, I'll just be a moment. Well, I gotta shove off. I gotta get to work. Uh, well, thank you for coming in. Uh, goodbye. Bye, Miss Lockridge. Robert, it wouldn't be about my children's wing, would it? Yes, we want to talk about your children's wing. <laughs> now, hold it, Alicia. You'll have your chance at lunch. What are you beating around the bush for? Why don't you tell her what we want to talk about? I've known her for a long time. Alicia's got a mind of her own. LRB's right. Let's handle it this way. What? Oh, no, no, nothing. Fine. Then we'll see you at Morrissey's. Good. Goodbye, Alicia. Mrs. Howell. Oh, Mrs. Howell. I've been 
been chasing you for almost a block. My goodness, Bert, that's very flattering. It's been a long time since I was chased by a young man. How about buying some raffle tickets? Certainly. What will I win? A Shetland pony. That's just what I need. And a genuine leather and silver sack, too. Oh, isn't that ridiculous? I'm so jumpy, I've forgotten my purse. Chase me again some other time, boys. I'll buy two tickets. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Marcy. Those uh, five foghorns from City Hall are back there trying to out-toot each other. Thank you. Good afternoon, Miss Hall. Good afternoon, Frank. Nice Your sense of timing is impeccable, Alicia. Have a beer. Very well, but I want to keep a clear head. Sit down, gentlemen. I think I can save you all a good deal of time by acquainting you with a few pertinent facts. I know your problems, and I realize we must go into the matter thoroughly. Well, Mrs. Hull, perhaps you don't know all our problems. Oh, but I, I do bear levering. It doesn't need to cost as much as you think. I have here the price per square foot, the comparison of materials, the advantages of utilizing our present heating system. You see, if Alicia, we should put the Alicia, boiler... Alicia, before you go any further. Voting over beer is a little irregular, but I'll entertain a motion. Move we appropriate a reasonable sum to construct a children's wing addition to the library. These plans be turned over to the building department with the recommendations to proceed as soon as feasible. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Carried. There, Mrs. Hull, you've got your children's wing. Well, I hardly know what to say. What we'll do about the financing is another matter. Oh, I haven't any worries about that. I know you'll find a way. I am reminded of the time when I first talked to Judge Ellaby about our library. Of course, you weren't a judge then, Robert. You may remember our library was behind a cigar store. We rented it with the profits of a tea and bazaar given by... Mm, that is delicious. Mrs. Carter Bennett's Afternoon Literary Society. I said, Robert. Uh, Mrs. Hull. If you... May we put that aside for a moment? What we'd like to know, Mrs. Hull, is... how in the world did this book get in our library? Why, I purchased it. Do you know what it's about, Mrs. Hull? Yes, it's about the communist dream. It's the one Robert took out the other day. It's causing trouble. We've had a number of letters and phone calls about it. Well, I'm sorry. It's creating a commotion. Well, I've gone through it, Alicia, and I must say the commotion seems justified. That's pretty hard stuff to take. It's pure red propaganda. Yes. It's not even subtle about it. Well, then we certainly should remove it, shouldn't we? Remove it. That's right. Remove it. You don't propose to defend it? Well, on the contrary, I, I think it's a preposterous book. But um, don't you want people to know how preposterous it is? That, that's why I ordered it. Goodness, if I took every book off the shelves that I thought preposterous. Look, Mrs. Hull, why don't you leave all the other preposterous books in and take this one out, huh? Well... I think it's a matter of principle, Mr. Greenbaum. Why do we have to have the principles and the communists? Now, just a minute. I dare say there's arguments on both sides, but we could sit here all day. Exactly. But a thing like this can stir up a hornet's nest. And the fact is, Mrs. Hull, we want it out of the library. I'm a politician, Mrs. Hull. Now, you've got your children's wing. You do this for us. I've often said a librarian is a peninsula surrounded on three sides by a city council. <laughs> Very well, gentlemen. Frank. Mrs. Hull, I'm your devoted admirer. Now, Paul, you say that to all the librarians. <laughs> Have some more beer, Frank. And uh, send this out with the rest of the garbage, will you? No, I, I don't like to see a book destroyed. I'll dispose of it some way. I don't quite know how. You see, I've never been forced to remove a book from the library before.
It's after closing, Mr. Belden. Would you mind closing up tonight? Of course not, Martha. How do you get rid of a book? You mean one that's worn out? No, it's not worn out. It's not pornographic. It's not an old edition. Well, that's my problem. Good night, Martha. Good night. Draw, Mr. Duncan. Well, thank you. I admire all of your lines. Mm -mm. Well, my tongue gets loose when I have more than two. When's it going to get loose enough to say I love you? You can never tell. Well, in that case. Here. Well, maybe I should tell you something. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I love you. See, it does wonders for you. Now talk on. I just love you. That's all, I guess. No, it's not all. It's no matter of our getting married, remember? I've had one, thanks. I just don't want it to happen again, Paul. You just made a mistake. What of it? Making mistakes is part of living. Why, Dr. Cliché. <laughs> Do you know what that impossible woman has done? Stuck the book back in the library. What? That's right. She phoned Levering and he just called me. Well, she can't do that. Yeah, I know, but she did. What's this all about? Let him tell you. I need a drink. What's been happening? Oh, at lunch today, she worked her way through half a bowl of gumbo and agreed to take the book out. You heard the rest. What book? A little number called The Communist Dream. Oh, that's what she meant. What? I'm just surprised she agreed to take it out in the first place. Why? Well, she's a woman who's very set in some of her ideas. What ideas? Mm -hmm. 
Civil liberties, censorship, intellectual freedom. Mr. Duncan? Hmm. Well, hello. Oh. I'm oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you just gave me a thought. Will you please tell us why you changed your mind? Well, I'm afraid I succumbed to a little gentle bribery the other day. The children's wing, you know. Then I thought it over very carefully. I simply couldn't do what you asked. Just, uh, uh, what do you mean, you couldn't? I mean I couldn't remove a book because it has ideas we don't like. But we're faced with a real problem, Mrs. Howell. Here are a dozen more letters we've received Letters from, from people who helped elect this council. And here's a petition from some group calling itself the Kenford Women's Committee Against Subversion. Unless there is immediate action, we intend to take this matter up with the newspapers. Now, is that shabby little potboiler worth this kind of disturbance? I'm afraid it is. You can't run a library or a city council to please everybody. <clears throat> you mind if I smoke? Not at all. Um, Mrs. Howell, can't we look at this from a practical point of view? Take my word for it. It's not unreasonable to ask you to take out just this one book. Is it this one book? We have an entire stack of books on political theory, of all shades. What will happen if you start getting letters about them? Well, we'll have to worry about that when and if. Alicia, we've been friends for a good many years. I'll stick with you when you're right. But when you're wrong, you're wrong. What do you want to do? Turn the library into a propaganda agency for the Kremlin? Really? Really, Mr. Martin? What do you think... What do you think Thomas Jefferson would say to this? Oh, no, Alicia, let's not drag in the Founding Fathers. Please do not interrupt, Robert. I feel this most deeply. There was a book in our library for many years. It's still there. It made me sick to my stomach every time I checked it out. Mein Kampf. Maybe we ran the risk of spreading Hitlerism, but it didn't work that way. It worked the other way. People read it. It made them indignant. Maybe it helped defeat him. Don't you see, by keeping this book in the library, we attack the communist dream? We say to the communists, we do not fear you. We are not afraid of what you have to say, but you fear us. You fear the truth. Tell me, would they dare keep a book praising democracy in a Russian library? Gentlemen, you want me to take this book out of the library. You ought to fight to keep it on the shelves. Uh, in the light of what Mrs. Hall has just said, I wonder if she'd mind my asking a few questions. No, I don't mind. <clears throat> For one thing, I just wanted to inquire if you're familiar with the Council for Better Relations with the Soviet Union. Why, yes, I, I believe I was a member at one time. In the American Peace Mobilization? Yes, I belong to that, too. Then there's the, the Voice of Freedom Committee. Well, what's the point of this? A lot of people joined a lot of these organizations, especially while the war was going on. That's right. I think that last one got me for five bucks. Do you know that these organizations, there are half a dozen of them here, turned out to be communist fronts? Yes, I was distressed to find out they were. That's why... I resigned or stopped paying attention to them. Mr. Duncan, just what is the purpose of this? What are you driving at? What is that infernal remedy? They're still remodeling across the streets. Well, can't they work on days we don't have a council meeting? Mrs. Hull, I note that on this one, your name appears on the letterhead as one of the sponsors. 
May I see that? Yes, I seem to be included in quite a long list. I wonder if the other names were also used without consent. This was done without your knowledge, then? Most certainly. Still, this was a communist outfit. You were a member. You must have believed in some of their ideas. No, they believed in some of mine. Mr. Duncan, I resent your questions and your implication. It is obvious we do not agree on many things, including censorship. But in case you are in any doubt, I am not a communist. I never was a communist. I detest communism. I didn't say you were a communist, Mrs. Hall. All I'm trying to show is that you were careless. You were easy prey for a lot of high-sounding slogans. You talk about detesting communists, but you seem to be blind to the fact that these people use our laws. They hide behind our laws for one purpose, to destroy our laws. Now, forgive me, but you were a dupe once. You could very well be a game. I wish you hadn't gone into all this, Paul. I hardly think it was necessary. Well, I do. You realize what could happen if this got out? What do you mean, if this got out? Not only you won't remove this piece of trash called the communist dream, but couple it with this other stuff. I thought when I walked in here, you wanted to talk about banning a book. We're talking about something quite different now, aren't we? Paul, if Mrs. Hull gets rid of the book, can we forget all this? Of course. As long as it's understood that in the future any questionable material would be screened by the council. Remember when you said, just this one book, Mr. Greenbaum? Don't you see the position you're putting us in? Yes, I see the position you're in, and I see the position I'm in. You have the power to remove the book from the library, and you have the power to remove me. And if you do one, you will have to do the other. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Alicia. Alicia, please don't walk out like this. You're making it impossible for us. I plead with you. Think it over. I'm sorry I can't oblige you, Robert. When did this organization begin? Do you remember? Have you ever seen them? Who is she? Fool around. Let's suppose that you simply have to become so complex. No budging her, huh? I'm for firing her. Right away. You can't do that. She's been in the job for over 25 years. Well, what are we supposed to tell people? That we met Alicia Hull in glorious battle and went down for the count? All the same, she's got a point. Now, don't start that. No, I, just, I just meant that uh, we should think this over. Think what over? Look, well, the fact is that either the council runs Mrs. Hull or Mrs. Hull runs the council. Now, don't underestimate the feeling behind this. We intend to take this matter up with the newspapers. Now, that's the next step. The one after that is the next election. This council gets slapped out of office. And we'll deserve it. Unless we've got the guts to take a stand. There must be some other way. There is no other way. She made that clear. Move we discharge Alicia Hollis Library into the public library. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Edgar? How about you? Aye. On a thing like this, we ought to be unanimous, Bob. Aye. I think that's about all. 
Can you think of anything more? No, Mrs. Hall. If something should come up, you could reach me at the Sagamore Arms. Mrs. Hall, I, I feel you should know that, that it was something I said to Mr. Duncan that, I mean, well, I, I, I don't think it was wrong, but then you've nothing to concern yourself over. Goodbye, Martha. Goodbye, Mrs. Hall. Goodbye, Carl. Goodbye, Nicole. Goodbye, Susie. See you, Mrs. Hall. I know, Susie. Another contest. I'm gonna win this one, Mom. All I've got to do is solve 33 of those puzzles. And write 50 words on how Bristol soap flakes cuts down my working day. I know. You go hop into bed. It's a tie, neatness counts. It was certainly nice of Mrs. Hall to give you this. Freddie Slater with great expectations from his friend Alicia Hall. day like this. Something terrible is happening. Well, now, you, you come upstairs with me. We better dry you off. They're taking your name off in the library. I know. I know. I want to tell you, Mrs. Hull, no matter what anybody else is saying, you're still the same with me. Thank you, Bill. Don't you want to be at the library? Oh, I do, very, very much. Then why aren't you there? Well, it's not just me. The city council's above me, and, and they're fine men, but I disagreed with them about something. What was it, Mrs. Hull? I'll go to them. I'll talk to the mayor. Oh, Freddie, that's very sweet of you, but I'm afraid it wouldn't do much good. You see, there's a book they don't think should be in the library, and, uh, well, I couldn't take it out. What was the matter with the book? Well, there are, there are people who don't like it, nor, for that matter, do I. Couldn't you pretend? Couldn't you maybe hide the book somewhere? You could tell them you're sorry, and if you really wanted to, you could come back. I know it's hard to understand, but someday you will. 
And, and Miss Lockridge will be at the library to help you? I don't want Miss Lockridge. I want you. Well, now I, I'll be right here in town. Please, Mrs. O. Please. Freddie, try to understand. but there must be some reason why only 20 people showed up. I'll tell you why only 20 people showed up. Here's why. Tonight's paper. I don't mind telling you, Reverend Wilson. I had an awful fight with my husband. He didn't want me to come when he read that. Why? What does it say? Alicia Hull admits red affiliations. Additional facts were presented today on the dismissal of Alicia Hull from her post as librarian. It was authoritatively stated by a member of the city council that Mrs. Hull admitted membership in numerous communist front organizations. It was also learned the city council felt that under the circumstances, it had no alternative, and so forth. Is that true, Mrs. Hull? Yes, it's true, Mr. Jones. It's about half true. What isn't there is when and why she joined and resigned from them. We may as well face one thing. If we go into this, we're going to be called Reds. Please. Even if what Mr. Jones says is so, I don't think it should stop us from... Reverend, it's all very well for you. You're a man of the cloth. But the rest of us are not in exactly that spot. I'm, I'm disgusted. Look at us. An item appears in the paper and we're frightened out of our wits. It's time we got on with what we came here for. In a case like this, it, it might be a good idea to circulate a petition. If it's money you want, I'll be glad to help. But I can't take much time out. Petitions and... and... One minute, please, everybody. I've been thinking while you've been talking. I've left the library, and I believe we should let it rest at that. You all have your own lives to lead. Mr. Meeker is a really busy man. Mr. Corbett has his clients, and Miss Layton is in the high school. Alicia, you can just forget that. No, Eleanor. If the day ever came, you should lose your job because of me. Any of you. But Mrs. Hall, that doesn't mean we have I to give... I want you to drop it. I really do. Alicia Hull, when you came in here, you were ready to fight. I've changed my mind, Morrissey. I want to thank you all for coming. I, uh, I'm sorry. Everything considered, I think you've made a wise decision, Mrs. Hull. That's a hard question to answer, Frank. Oh, all aboard! Train leaving on track number. Hi, Freddie. Hi, Dad. What's your idea, baby? I thought you were packing. I postponed the trip. I've decided my place is with you. What is it? Another airmail special delivery argument with your mother? No, I uh, just changed my mind. That's all. Where are you heading, Buster? I need to wash up for supper. I'm not going because I don't feel I should leave Freddie right now. Well, why not? What's this all about? It's because of Mrs. Hull. I'm so confused. Well, what does it take to unconfuse him? I don't know. Boy, they find somebody's a red, everybody goes about his business. And in my house, the walls come tumbling down. He seems to think Mrs. Hull betrayed him in some way. That's right, she did. She betrayed everybody. 
Maybe it's a good thing all around. Maybe Freddy will spend some time with the kids now instead of that library. Oh, really? It's not that simple. <laughs> Look, Mrs. Hull played a big part in his life. Yeah, too big, if you ask me. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm confused. Listen, she belonged to a dozen commie outfits. It said so right in the paper. All right, they held a meeting down at the Elm Street Church, and they wanted to back her up. And she told them, forget it. She didn't want any cup. What does that prove? I just can't believe it about her, that's all. Oh, man, she even gave me some of that pinko talk. Locked in the laboratory. <laughs> Too much conformity in this country. And the devil knows what crummy notion she put into Freddy's head. Say hello to her. <laughs> I said say hello to her. Hello, Mrs. Hall. Why, oh, hello, Frank. Well, it's about time. <laughs> I was going to send out the St. Bernard. I see you belong to the school of thought that thinks I ought to be seen around more. Morrissey? Oh, <laughs> not so good. My hocks are killing me. I'm massive calcium deposits. Oh, William, bring me a pail of gumbo, double strength. Old customers falling off. Don't come in much anymore. New faces all around. Younger crowd now. B girls. You know, there's actually nothing wrong with the people in this town. Their hearts are in cold storage, that's all. It's got snails in it today. Eat hearty. She called you. I went over before. You go. She used to be your friend. She's not anymore. Go on, Bird. See what she wants. Okay. You want me, Mrs. Hall? Are you still selling the raffle tickets? How much are they? Raffle tickets? Oh, we had that raffle already. Gosh, that was way back in April. Was it that long ago? I must be losing track.
Wait, Bert. It is Saturday afternoon, isn't it? Well, yeah, sure it's Saturday. How would you like to take me to the movies? It'll be my treat. Well, now? Well, uh, well, you see, uh, well, I'm with some of the fellas. Well, I, I know them all. Why don't you ask them to come along, too? Well, they can't go, Mrs. Hall. Uh, some of them already seen the picture, and some of them got to be home early. All right, Bert. Another time. Uh, bye, Mrs. Hall. Bert, ask Freddie to come and visit me. Tell him I miss him. I will. My folks say you can't arrest them until you get the goods on them. That's right. They go underground. My Uncle Milton knew one once when underground. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi guys. Hey, Mrs. Hollett should look funny underground, wouldn't she? <laughs> <laughs> you to go see her. Double dare. You're double dared now. You gotta go. I don't have to see her. I know enough already. Yeah? What? Like, for instance. What do you know, Fred? Things. From her. And other things I heard. What other things? You heard from who? From my father. My father. He told me. He says she's got a brother. In Peru. And that's the one she's sending the secret code to from one of those books in the library. I just got to bet you don't know no more than we do. I do, I do! You know how she kept that secret book? Yes, all kinds of secret books. The secrets of the world are in there. She told me so herself. Prove it. If you know where these books are, show us. How about copping some? Can't you see he's lying? He doesn't know anything about those kind of books. I do, I do. I know right where they are. Hundreds of them. I can get every one if I want to. Go home. It's past your bedtime. Yeah, go on home. Tell your mother to read your bedtime story. Yeah, go on home. We got something to talk about. Something secret. I'll show you. I will so. I'll show you. Oh, Carl. Carl, I'd like you to put these new titles up first thing tomorrow. Can't do it till I get here, Miss Lockridge. Forgive me. It's late, I know. You seemed upset on the phone. Yes. It's about Freddie Slater. Sit down, Martha. The, the boy's become impossible lately. He doesn't come to the library much, but, but 
when he does, he's, he's so... so strange and... and hostile. He used to be so careful about books. Now I find him flinging them about. I come across him in the stacks, places where he shouldn't be. Why did you come to see me? You have such an influence on him. You always know how to manage him. Well, I don't anymore. I don't see him anymore. You don't see him? I don't do a lot of things I used to do, and not by choice. I should think you and Mr. Duncan would have suspected that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have troubled you. You blame Mr. Duncan and me, don't you? Blame you for what? Because I have no life here anymore? I didn't realize I... Please don't say you're sorry, Martha. Mrs. Hope, Paul was just one member of that council. Besides, what he did, he never meant to harm you. I'd feel better if you believed that. Martha, I've tried to keep my perspective these past months. I've tried to understand people and to forgive people. But really, do you mind if I am not concerned in making you or Mr. Duncan feel better? I shouldn't have come. Perhaps, perhaps you'll believe at least that I really wish I knew what was happening to Freddie Slater. I think I know. He used to love books and he used to love me. And now his love is turning to hate. Yes, it is frightening, isn't it? Good night, Mrs. Hall. <laughs> well, so does your vocabulary. <laughs> Come along. Hmm. Paul Duncan? Mm -hmm. When did you snag him? Oh, while well, you weren't around. Well, now that you got him, what do you plan to do with him? Keep him busy when you are around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just might at that. It's been tried before. As a matter of fact, here's my campaign manager. Campaign manager? For what? This Johnny-come-lately of yours thinks he can lick me for the legislature this fall. He's not the only one who thinks so, Bascom. We need some younger men down there. You're welcome to try it. But don't holler when you get steamrollered. Don't make any bets. Remember, I've got an issue. You haven't. You mean you once got a librarian fired? I wouldn't put it just that way. I know. You're going to play the young hero who saved us from the Red Menace. Well... That issue may backfire. I'll take my chances. Whatever became of her, anyway? Oh, she's still around. I saw her the other day. It is a pity, though, how she let herself be taken in by those people. I'm glad you fellas didn't let her buffalo you. If why don't we drop it, folks? It's all long ago and far away. Still, it's a comfort to know my children aren't subjected to her influence any longer. I think she was a danger to the community. Are you talking about Mrs. Hull? I certainly am. I think that's ridiculous. Why, some of the loveliest times of my life were spent under Mrs. Hull's influence. And if she's a danger to the community, then so am I. And so is every kid who grew up with me. Hazel. No, Dad, I mean it. How about it, Sandy? Do you see Mrs. Hull working like a little beaver for the Kremlin? Golly, I don't know. I never gave it much thought. Maybe it's time you started. Is that going to be your slogan? Young America, awake. Your comic books are in danger. <laughs> I guess the only thing worse than a young politician with an issue is an old politician without one. Paul, you aren't really serious about any of this. Of course he's serious. He's right, too. But he can't be. He just can't be. Look, this is no place to discuss it. 
After all, Miss Lockridge, we can't be blind to what's going on. H-bombs, brainwashing, boys like Sandy here still being drafted, their careers interrupted. Let's show how I know something about that. In case you've forgotten, Dorothy, her husband's career was interrupted at Chateau Thierry. Where's Chateau Thierry? In France. That was the First World War. Stephen Hall was a member of this club. In fact, he was one of the founding members, along with me and a few others. Was he a radical, too? Very radical. He had one of the most radical drives off the third tee you ever saw. Never played it safe. Always tried to clear the brook. Very radical. Handsome man, too, Dorothy, if you remember. And Alicia was a pretty little thing in those days. Full of ginger. This club's not seen that kind of pep since. Not even from you, Hazel. They made quite a pair. They were married less than a year when Steve was drafted. Pity. Alicia was the kind of girl... She should have had 20 kids. Fill that with the same, Sandy? You were saying you had an issue? Yes. And in spite of the hearts and flowers, I still have. Oh. Oh, what are you doing? What is it? Oh, Mama, I'm scared. Oh, you're just dreaming again, darling. It's all right. It's all right. It was there moving around in the dark like snakes. What, dear? A book. There must be something in the air tonight, because, boy, I've been having bad dreams, too. I don't feel much like sleeping. Hey, how about you and me taking a little walk, huh, Freddy? Walk? Sure. Get a little air and clear the cobwebs. Maybe even get a soda, huh? Is it all right, Mom? I guess so. Throw some clothes on you did. Of course, dreams come from somewhere. I know every time I have a bad dream, I can usually figure out why. Snakes aren't coming out of books. It's pretty scary, all right. Some of them were huge. Flames shooting out of them. Like the chimera. The what? It's a monster in a wonder book. Oh. Sure. That's it. That book. That's where your dream came from. Books that stir people up, give them nightmares. That can be pretty bad stuff. Gee. Guess you're sure right on that, Dad. Of course, there are good books and bad books. You know, good people and bad people. You say Mrs. Hull was in your dream, too, huh? I know you used to like her a lot, Freddy. That's the trouble. You can't always put your finger on him. Could have been that fellow behind the soda fountain. They could pop up anywhere. Yeah. We've got one of those down at the plant, son. It fills up a temperature of 7,000 degrees. Cuts through solid steel like a hunk of cheese. Sure, she talks sweet as honey. All the time you can bet she was working away back there. She had 25 years to fill those shelves with poison. Hmm. She and those books of hers. All they want is one thing. Smash and destroy. Smash everything we've ever built up in this country. Where have I our dearest memories enshrined in civic pride and hope?
hope sublime There stands our library Yours and mine Of liberty and amity To every you and every me And thankfully to address you today not as your mayor but as a father all of us are troubled about what the future holds for our children this new children's wing is the kind of thing that reassures us it's no accident that our library stands in the center of town it was planned that way a library is the center of a town we dedicate this edition to our town and to our children. And now we'll hear from our high school band. Alicia, I can't take the stairs anymore. I'd love it. I've been trying to get you on the phone for hours. I've been up and down, basically all day. But I left at least half a dozen messages. They haven't delivered a message here at the Sagamore Arms for 15 years. What is it? Is anything wrong? The dedication exercises for the children's wing. I've come to fetch you. You mean I've been invited? I'm inviting you. Just look. Have you ever seen anything like it? I don't know what to put where. So you're letting us bully you into getting out. I'm going to visit my sister in California. I want to taste a nut burger before I die. Alicia, you have every reason to despise me. All of us. Oh, well, don't be foolish. I ran across a photograph of you and Stephen and me. Can you realize how long ago it was? I was talking about him only the other night. Will you please put on your coat and come with me? A few months ago, yes. I'd have been glad to go and hold up my head and stare right back. This is the present I bought for Agnes Evans. Remember I told you I was looking for one? I always drop by on her birthday and leave some gift. I found a little appointment pad with a clasp and a gold pencil for her dates. It's really quite a charming thing. Her mother said she wasn't home and I'd better just leave it. She was home, Robert. I'm tired. I'm tired and beaten. There's no use pretending. There were a few moments of joy with Stephen. And afterwards, there was the library and the children. I filled my life with them. And it was a good life in many ways. It wasn't the council 
all the whispers or any of the people. It was the children. I think I, I could have stood anything but losing the children. <laughs> Having them turn from me. <laughs> Alicia, I'm not going to dedicate that children's wing without you. We come now to a very important moment. Some months ago, in connection with library activities, a children's contest was held to name a list of the 10 best books. When the cornerstone is put down, these books will be sealed in it. Now, I'm going to call on the boy who won the contest to come forward and read off the titles. Frederick Slater. Christian Anderson. Stories from the Bible. I don't know what's happened to Ellerby. He's Ellerby supposed to be Tracy. next. Do you want to take his place? Treasure Island. A wonder book. David Copperfield. Who is What's she doing here? Robinson Crusoe. Alicia Hub. Disgraceful. Boy, finish it up. The Three Musketeers and the Dictionary. I suspect young Mr. Slater won because of the dictionary. All right, boy, just to go on back there and sit down. Now we come to the groundbreaking. I'm glad Judge Ellerby arrived in time to handle the shovel, or shall I call a spade a spade? There's only one person who should have this honor, Alicia Hull. How about helping an old friend? You're not my friend. Freddy. You're not any 
everybody's friend. Freddy. They kicked you out. You don't belong here. They found out about you. You're right, son. Tell her. Tell her. Tell her again. You want to destroy us. You're like all the rest of them. They found out what you were doing. Freddy. You don't belong here. You're not the librarian anymore. You're a communist. The communist. The communist. The communist. Stop it. 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 He's all right. He's upstairs in bed. Yeah, he's sleeping it off. Yeah, he's okay. And we sure appreciate your interest, Miss Lockridge. Goodbye. I don't see the point in lying. What do you want to do? Tell her he wouldn't eat? That he barged out of here like a wild man? Didn't he disgrace us enough? What did we do? We bring him up wrong? He's never had a whipping in his life. I never laid a hand on that boy. Are you going to start banging that piano? I don't bang it. I play it. Or would you know the difference? Of course not. I'm not cultured. No, that's one thing you'll never be accused of. Your son won a contest. You couldn't even be there. Well, if it had been a wrestling match, you would have been right in the front row. And spending my time better. Contest. You want to know I'm stuffed to my gizzard with his library and your piano stopped? Well, maybe that's why he's the way he is. Because his own father resents him. And resents his mother, too. That this little bit of culture. I give up why he's the way he is and I give up your culture, too. Well, I give up your happy wit. All oh, those great Big, stupid, wisecracks. Well, why don't you go out and look for him? Don't just stand there. Well, did his parents say anything else? No. Only that everything's all right. Everything's fine. Look around you. All the nice, normal people going about their nice, normal business. You'd better hurry. You'll be late for your council meeting. Look, look I don't blame you for being upset. I'll admit that it was pretty ugly this afternoon. But let's not confuse the issue. That's become your favorite word. Whatever was the issue, do you remember? A, A stubborn woman was fired. Your council blew itself up with civic virtue. The city got something to buzz about. I got a better job. You got a platform. You make it sound like a grab bag. Well, what do you think it was? Patriotism? See you later. I thought we'd agree.
agreed to act as a body. Yes, and a body is supposed to have a heart. What are we getting so steamed up about? Just because some problem child decides to throw a fit, we you can't... You don't really believe that, do you, Edgar? He wouldn't have thrown a fit six months ago. This couldn't have happened six months ago. All right, what do you want us to do? Give her back a job, that's what I want you to do. Make a public apology. Now, wait a minute. Everybody I listen to lately seems to be lost in a fog or something. Look, we happen to be in a war. Cold, hot, or lukewarm, that's what it is. War, and we'd better win it. We can't take time out to investigate every little wrinkle on every little problem and be kind to stubborn old ladies to boot. Sure, some innocent people are going to get hurt. Well, that's too bad. Right now, that's the way it's gotta be, unless we all wanna wind up in a soup. That's exactly right. That's exactly wrong. That's communist talk. That's just the way they do things. Let the innocent cook with the guilty. The hell with whom we hurt on the way as long as we get where we're going. Let me tell you something. I'm not afraid of communism. Or of a communist book in a library. But I am afraid of that kind of talk. It scares the living life out of me. There's one thing I forgot, Duncan, for a while. I forgot what country I live in. Where I live, the safety of any one person, any stubborn old lady, is the sacred concern of every decent citizen. And I hope to God I never forget that again. Never again! Tell me again, Paul. Nothing so terrible has happened. Only a little boy was turned into a lunatic. And it's not the nice, normal people who set the fires. It's the lunatics. 
Martha, you'd better have a drink. I could use one, too. Let's go up to my place. Just don't get it, do you? I don't want any more of it, don't you understand? I don't want to be engaged to a rising young politician. I'd rather crawl into a hole somewhere. isn't just the boy. We're all to blame. I'm to blame, too. I didn't fight back. I hear you're going away. I hope you'll change your mind. You've got to help us rebuild this library. Don't leave. I have no intention of leaving. I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to help rebuild this library. And if anybody ever again tries to remove a book from it, he'll have to do it over my dead body. Mm -hmm. 